Our patient is Lewis Bloom from the movie Nightcrawler. Lewis Bloom, the protagonist for the movie, was born in the Los Angeles Valley. He essentially raised himself on the streets since no other family background is given. We see examples of his disregard for others and lack of emotion when he kills a police officer who finds him stealing from a scrapyard and barely reacts to any of it. One day he happened upon a deadly late night car crash and he saw a nightcrawler, a mercenary reporter of tragedies, filming the whole thing. He then sold a stolen bike for a camera and police scanner and thus began his career as a nightcrawler. Lewis Bloom is a textbook case of antisocial personality disorder. He meets virtually all of the criteria listed in the DSM and more. In this cluster B personality disorder, there are things like a lack of regard for right and wrong, lack of regard for the rights of others, and other behavioral issues. We diagnosed him with this disorder because he meets several of the criteria listed in the DSM, but to focus on two specifically, criterion A1 is a failure to conform to social norms with respect to lawful behaviors as indicated by repeatedly performing acts that are grounds for arrest. As previously mentioned, Bloom is caught in the opening scene stealing chain link fence from a construction site to sell for scraps. When, constru when confronted by an officer, he not only lies about why he was in the area, he then mugs the officer for his watch and shows completely a lack of remorse. Criterion A5 is a reckless disregard for the safety of self or others. Bloom continuously puts both himself and his business partner in danger throughout the film by engaging in reckless behavior such as driving at high speeds and entering active crime scenes. In one scene in particular, there was an active robbery murder and Bloom not only entered the house to film it, he later had him and his partner follow the perpetrators until it was an area that was very public and would be a very violent scene to make for a good film to send to the news agency. One criteria, however, that Bloom did not meet was a failure to sustain consistent work behavior or honor financial obligations. Bloom is very concerned with his responsibility to work in finance, and this may have something to do with his narcissistic uh, tendencies. But nonetheless, he gets fairly aggressive when he cannot hold up to the standards he sets for himself. One night when he couldn't get footage, he threw a tantrum in his apartment that resulted in the destruction of his personal property. And in fact, he's so concerned with responsibility in others, he indirectly had his partner killed because he felt his, par felt his partner was irresponsible and disloyal. Other than this one, he arguably meets all of the other criteria listed in the DSM. The best known treatment for antisocial personality disorder is cognitive therapy, which is a type of psychotherapy. Cognitive therapy focuses on changing the thinking of a patient, which then can therefore change the behavior. It is important for the therapist to reinforce any emotion besides anger and connect the emotion with the appropriate action. This is essential, this is essential to treating antisocial personality disorder patients since they have both distorted thinking and a lack of emotion. So helping change their thinking can prove very beneficial. Medication for antisocial personality disorder is scarce. However, lithium carbonate has been shown to reduce anger, threatening behavior, and temper outbursts. The long-term outcomes can vary largely per patient. However, the goal is a diminished amount of aggressive behavior, as well as more socially normal thought processes. There are little to no ethical concerns with cognitive therapy or lithium carbonate, as cognitive therapy is essentially talk therapy, and lithium carbonate, while not always used, only reduces anger and nothing more. This was an extremely accurate portrayal of antisocial personality disorder. Lewis Bloom characterizes not only all of the official criteria for this disorder, but also the popular cultural symptoms. The presence of psychological disorders in film gives us insight into the symptoms of these disorders, how these people may respond to certain social stimuli, and the effect they may have on those around them.